Howdy, metal boys. This is Don Van Starr. Mike Flitz. Bob All. Frank Gilchrist. Nick Lee. From Riot 5. You are listening to The Metal Boys. You're watching The Metal Boys. Say farewell to the future. Get ready for the ride. We're going down to hell tonight. So strap yourself inside. There's a glaring contradiction. In your world that's made of glass. Something small can shatter it. And nail you to the past. The road beneath your wheels. The madness that you feel. Welcome to The Metal Voice. Today on the show we have Mr. Neil Turbin, ex-Anthrax, current lead singer of Death Riders, in LA at the Whiskey, interviewing the one, the only, the legendary Riot. Neil, what's going on, man? Hey, what's happening there, Jimmy? It was great to see Riot. Man, what a show. Those guys were kick-ass. Unbelievable. In the interview, they spoke about the legacy of Mark. They talk about the le legacy of Riot. Can you comment about that? Mark Reale has left quite a incredible legacy of, of uh, a great catalog of songs, and you know the band is is going very strong. It's it's just it's amazing, really. So Riot's one of my very favorite, favorite bands from when I went to high school. So uh, what about you know the, the history of Riot? I mean, how's it? How, how does that affect, you know, the band today? Yeah, we're all Riot fans to begin with. And we take it seriously. We're going to do the songs justice. And even in the music we write, we're going to pay tribute to all different styles. And my brother, Mark Reale, we're going to make sure we do the right thing by him. You know, what? I, I know that that's a challenge as far as, you know, get, gaining acceptance with a new lineup. But what would you say are some of the challenges you first had in your coming over? I know you guys played in Europe. You played a show together in Germany, yeah. mm -hmm. but before that you guys were out there, you know, kind of breaking in the band. Yeah, there were a couple of hurdles there. The first one was, do we continue? And uh, I take care of Mark's dad, now that, you know, Mark was an only child, and he was said, Mike, please, you know, continue on. Do it for Mark. If you stop, they're going to stop listening, they're going to forget. You go out and you play Mark's music. So that was the first thing. Is it okay? Second thing was, car I could the band do a good live show. So as Donnie said, we did four shows. We didn't know what to expect. We were nervous. Not if we could play, but if the fans were buying it. So then we did the four shows, and they went well, right? I mean, so now the next step, can we write a new album? What kind of what are we doing? We're going to do all stuff. And we said, let's honor the whole catalog. So we did a couple of things that could be on Fire Down Under, things that could be on Thunder Steel. We try to you know, keep it modern too, a little bit. So. You know, you have three members of this current Riot band. You have, uh, you know, Mike Flitz, Donnie, uh, Frank Gilchrist. These guys have been around in different eras of Riot. And together, they're continuing with Riot. And, and they talk about, you know, the days when they composed the songs with, or they arranged songs with uh, Mark Reale. I think it's, it's quite cool that almost every band member of Riot has had, you know, songwriting and, you know, work with Mark Reale. You know, Nick, who's on guitar with Riot, he, he worked with Mike Flintz for, for many years. So, I mean, they're so tight. Those guys are like a, an unstoppable machine. We had to find the right people. After that, we lost a couple members, you know, besides Mark's passing. And uh, we were fortunate enough to get these cats who just like came in. Came well, I, was, I did a record in 2000. Yeah, he did Army of One. Army of One. So, you know, me and Mark spent three years working on that record by ourselves alone in my little room. And we would talk about music for two hours and then rehearse for two hours and then talk about music for two hours. I mean, that's one thing we all have in common is that, you know, we spent a lot of time with Mark just talking about music, not even just playing it, just, you know, the philosophy of a good song, the philosophy of what a band is all about. And so like that, the song so himself more than that, right? Yeah, I mean, he, he was kind of shy and quiet, but when he sat down and talked to you about music, man, it was like an education, it was really intense. Hey, he didn't care, he never wanted to be a guitar hero, he wanted to write a good song. 
and that's what he, he taught us all. So when we wrote the, the last album, it's got to be a good song. The solos have to be like songs of the sub. Every song has to be a hit. So that, that, that's the mindset we have. Todd Michael Hall, the vocalist, the current vocalist on of Riot, he's got a lot of shoes to fill. You want to comment on that? Uh, you know, I was quite impressed by his, his abilities live. You know, he just delivered, you know, in a big way. Um, covering, you know, Guy Speranza, Rhett Forrester, um, you know, Tony Moore, um, Mike, you know, Mike DeMeo, Mike Torelli, yeah. all the Riot singers. He nailed every one of those eras, and his performance was, you know, just right on point. Yes, I want to give some love over to Todd, you know, who kicked ass when I saw him we get, did the show in um, Headbangers Open Air. I mean, you guys, you know, were the highlight of the festival, to say the least. And, uh, you know, just a little bit on, on your background, kind of, you know, uh, fitting into the band, kind of joining in and the challenges you had when you're coming in. Because I didn't even know uh, these guys until I got introduced to them by Bart Gabriel. And, uh, Actually, we we got together and worked on songs remotely, and, and then played those first four shows. And I met him for the first time when I flew to New York to, to rehearse with him for those shows. So we, I, I wasn't even sure if I could do it. I, I really didn't. I told Donnie when he started wanting me, "Well, give me a set list. I'm going to practice singing this at home and see if I can even sing this." Yeah. I remember being younger when Thundersteel came out. I thought, "Oh my God, that guy's on helium! Like, who could sing that?" You turns out I can <laughs> You're covering all of those singers. So. Yeah, I mean that that was the interesting part. I think for me, um, you know, I haven't, you know, we haven't had to do a lot of, of Mike DeMeo stuff. Uh, we we do Angel Eyes usually, but that's like one of my favorite songs. I don't know that, but I, I uh, and I listen to Army of One a lot of stuff. I, I haven't heard a whole lot that he does. It makes me think, oh my God, I don't think I can do that. Um, you know, Guy Sparanza just seems like he's totally in my wheelhouse. I, those are like the break songs in the set for me. I don't know why. I just, they had a all this thing because I think he does himself the worst. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my own songs are the hardest to sing. You got a lot of hits from It's because he doesn't give me any breath space. A lot of hits. Now let's talk about the influence of Mark. I mean, and how his music has evolved over the years. And that's what the band talks about. The legacy of this band, I mean, they just have song after song. It's, it's relentless hits. Relentless uh, anthems that you know the, the audience is singing with, and it, 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 the energy and and just the the quality of what they have to offer is just nonstop. Yeah, what do you guys feel about just the acceptance of the fans? I mean, obviously you have fans that are you know they have like myself. I mean, I had a hard time. I mean, not really a hard time with Restless Breed, but it wasn't Fire Down Under. I mean, it was a great album, but it was just a different, you know, Hard Loving Man, and, you know, Red Barster, it was a, he was a great front man, but, you know, Guy Speranza, I don't, I don't know if there's a lot of footage out there of Guy, but he was, you know, definitely the voice of Riot. I always wanted to go back to the hard rock blues thing. If you look at the first three records, it was uh, the cutting edge, you know, almost the beginning of metal. And then when you heard Red, he says, well, I'm going to write songs around Red's voice. He's got that raspy, bluesy voice. He can sing a song. And that's what Mark did. Mark, he, you know, his, big, his favorite band was the Beatles. Look how much the Beatles changed from every album. So Mark wasn't afraid of, I have to do this. I'm not pitching hole. So he went back to the whole hard rock thing. And the rest was pretty. A lot of fans didn't like it. And Donnie comes to the picture, and they write Thundersteel. Now he's full metal fucking jacket. <laughs> right? And then uh, a the few albums, and then... Uh, then Mike DeMeo comes in, oh, a bluesy singer, let me write a bluesy. And then the Mark in the 90s was writing all that bluesy, white snakey stuff again, which a lot of the Thundersteel fans did not like. So it happened a lot in Mark's career. But he didn't care, he just he wrote what he wanted to write. So the future of Riot, I mean, these guys going to be continuing? Are they going to be making more albums? What, what, what's going on in the future with Riot? Well, as everyone will hear in the interview, uh, the great news is that Riot will be doing a live record. Um, you know, they're going to be doing new material, so they'll be uh, coming out with another album, a new album. So that's very exciting news, you know, and the band is playing dates. I mean, they're out there touring the world. It's a 
next, uh, you know, the next uh, objective or strategy to what's the next hurdle? This is right at five. In a few years, it'll be right at six, seven, eight. <laughs> it'll be like to be 80 years old and be at right at 21. I can't scroll. <laughs> I'll still be coming no, to see you guys for sure. We're, we're trying to continue, you know, if, uh, if people, we keep delivering good music, people like it, we'll keep coming around. We got a possible live disc on the horizon, uh, a new studio one, probably uh, in about a year. That was so, uh, you know, people that want us to keep going, we'd probably go to, you know, go on the top of it, it seems like it's going good right now, so we're going to stick with it for a while. Well, thanks, guys. It's great to, to catch up with you here in L.A. at the Whiskey on the Sunset Strip, and I'm sure we'll get our ass kicked tonight. So. Thank you, Neil. Thanks, Look at Look at we love party. Neil, too. We're all fans of Neil. Yeah, without a doubt. We're we're in there. Well, there you have it. Neil Turbin in Los Angeles at the Whiskey with Riot. Neil, thanks for doing the interview. Hey, Jimmy. Riot was phenomenal. If you have the opportunity to go see Riot, if they come to Montreal, if they come back here in the West Coast or anywhere, you got to go see them. I love Riot, and it's great to see them still going strong and buy the new album, Unleash the Fire. It kicks ass. And thanks for having me on the show and giving me the opportunity to interview Riot. I mean, my favorite, one of my very favorite bands of all time. Thanks, Neil. Catch you next time on The Metal Voice.